My name is Rob. I'm Senior Learning Technologist in the Teaching Enhancement Unit. And over the next little while, we're going to be speaking a little bit about the Loop Gradebook. And specifically, we're going to be speaking about the Loop Gradebook and how we can use this to combine and calculate overall student grade. Um, so let's get into it then, folks. So the Loop Gradebook, what is it and what does it do? It allows editing teachers uh, to manage the grades for Loop activities, you know, things like assignments, things like quizzes where the grades have already been kind of, you know, graded and, and released to the students. Uh, the gradebook also allows you to control the visibility of grades. So, and you can also manage the way grades are displayed to students. So the uh, gradebook can be used to organize and manipulate the grades from across your loop module page. Uh, and you also have the option then if you have lots of different graded activities on loop to organize your gradebook into different categories, which can be useful for things like consolidated modules or very large or very long modules, etc. Um, a couple of specific things to know about the Loop Gradebook. Each Loop module page has its own gradebook. As you're going through, as you're using Loop, as you're adding activities to Loop, um, a space is automatically created in the gradebook for that um, uh, relevant grade. So the, probably the, the most important thing people use the gradebook for is to set the different weights of their graded activities. And by setting up your gradebook correctly and by, you know, setting up the weights correctly and using the gradebook to organize your students' grades, it means it kind of saves you some work at the other end of the spectrum because it then means that you can automatically import those grades into the marks entry system at the end of the semester. So another good thing is obviously, you know, if you, if you use loop for assessment activities, if you're using the gradebook well and you have it set up correctly, and if you do this over time, you know, each semester, by having that kind of grading data uh, in loop, you can then get a really good insight into how students are performing. And a lot of these can be exported out to Excel if you want to do your own little statistical analysis. But there's this um, concept that, that I like to term of, of double entry when it when it comes to loop. So original grade is always in the original activity and gradebook is where you're organizing and, and manipulating them. The gradebook is a, a, a wonderful tool on, on, on loop. The, the gradebook is really, you know, you only need to use it in a very simple way. And I'd encourage you all, particularly for starting out, just to use it in a very simple way. It is a hugely powerful tool. You can do lots of complex calculations with it and lots of complex setup, et cetera, et cetera. But in reality, you know, you only need to concern yourself with a fraction of what the gradebook can do. The two main things you need to concern yourself with are the grade visibility, so keeping items hidden from students that, so that they don't see their grades as they're being graded. The other thing is obviously the weightings, as I mentioned, assigning the proper weights to your different activities. And then perhaps, you know, if you have a consolidated module or a very large module, you might want to add some grade categories just to keep your gradebook organized. A couple of tips of good practice around gradebook. Uh, I would advise people to set up their gradebook early, kind of at the start of the semester. Go ahead and, you know, maybe set up your assignments, your quizzes, whatever you're doing with students, set them up at the start of the semester and set your gradebook up early as well, just so you have it out of the way and it's all done and dusted. Uh, the important thing is, you know, your weightings in the gradebook, you need to make sure they are all set up correctly and that they all add up to 1.0. Okay. Important thing to keep in mind is Loop is only concerned with coursework items or continuous assessment items. Okay, so all of that needs to add up to 1.0. Another good practice is obviously as you're grading students, as you're working through, hide the items um, so that students don't see the grades until you're ready for everyone to, to see it. Another few tips for you, again, as I mentioned, if, if, if you do have like a consolidated module or if you have a very large module or a module that runs over, yeah, two semesters, you might want to think about organizing your gradebook into categories. You don't have to, but it's a handy little tip if you've got a busy gradebook. Um, another really good tip that I'd advise you to do is anytime you make a change to the gradebook, so anytime you change a weight or you make something, you know, invisible or visible, always quickly jump and look at the user report because that will show you what the student sees. And that's a really good way of checking is everything okay with your gradebook? If you, if you can see what the student sees, and if everything looks correct. Um, it's important uh, that all students have grading data in, in loop, particularly if you're if you're going to use the importing function into the marks entry system. So even if a student has not submitted something, you know, you, you should record a, a zero for them. And again, you know, we'd really encourage you, obviously, the, the, the benefit of using Gradebook is that it saves you time at the other end of the process and you can do that importing into the marks entry system. 
Where can you go and get help? Obviously, we in the Teaching Enhancement Unit, we run clinics very regularly most weeks, so you can check out those details in our events calendar. Got lots of resources on the Loop staff support page, all around grading and so on, including a specific resource around how to work with the Loop, with Loop's gradebook. We also have instructions here on how the Mark's Entry System importing process works. And then, of course, if at any stage you need help, you can log a ticket at ISS and just note that obviously we in the TU are remitted to help with loop gradebook queries and, and, and set up and so on, all to do with the loop end of things. However, if your query relates to the Mark's Entry System, inputting of marks, etc., the Academic Systems Unit are the uh, unit in the university who look after the, the Mark's Entry System. Okay, so I'm going to go on in, into a, a quick demo now of, of all of this. So I'm over here now on my on my loop page. Um, so we can see it's a loop page, looks like looks like any other. Okay. So let's go and look at the gradebook. How do we get to the gradebook? We look at our course top menu up along here and uh, we click grades and that brings us into the gradebook. And as I mentioned before, the gradebook is very, very complex and has loads and loads of different areas. So I'm just going to focus on the kind of the two or three bits you, you need to know about. So when you first come into the gradebook, you land on an area here called the grader report. OK, and the grader report is just a great big, essentially, electronic spreadsheet of all the students on your module and all of the grades that they've gotten for all of their different activities on the loop page. OK, so that's fine. I don't want to look at that now. The first thing I want to do is go straight into my setup. All right. So the gradebook setup is really where you're obviously going to go and 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 do your manipulation and your 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 configuration of the gradebook. So this little um area here towards the upper left is our little navigational drop down. So if I just click on it here, we see I have a couple of other options now to go to different areas of the gradebook. And I obviously want to come down here to gradebook setup. So I just click on that. And now I'm looking at my gradebook setup. And what we're seeing here is exactly what we saw on my module page. These are great items for each one of those activities that we saw on my loop module page. First thing to check in your loop gradebook setup is scroll down the end here. And you want to look down here and make sure that your gradebook is set to this particular calculation method, which is called weighted mean of grades. Now, by default, your gradebook should be set to weighted mean of grades. Because this is set to weighted mean of grades, what that means is I have a little column here, as you can see, uh, and a little box in each one. And this is where I just simply I set my weights. I set the, you know, whatever the activity is, is worth relative to the module total. So let's look at my first item here. This is my Zoom classroom. So this is where I've been doing my online classes with students. That's not worth anything. Like they don't get any 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 grade for from from the Zoom classroom. So I'm going to leave that weight at zero point zero. So if something is formative, <clears throat> excuse me, if something does not contribute towards the module, we give it a weight of zero point zero. Next, they have a discussion forum uh, activity, and this is graded. I do want this to contribute to the module, and this is going to be worth ten percent of the module. So in here, I put in 0 0.1. So when I add these up now, I get 0 0.2 and 0 0.2 is 0 0.4 and 0 0.1 is 0 0.5. Scrolling up again, 0 0.7, 0 0.9, and then 0 0.1 makes 1.0. I'm just going to go down and click Save Changes. And there we go. My, my, my changes have been saved. My weights have been applied. It's as simple and as straightforward as that. Okay. Um. I'm going to go on now to show you um, how to make grade items visible and invisible. I need to go follow my own good practice that I was sharing with you earlier. Remember, as I said, whenever you make a change to the grade book, you should always check the user report. We're applying these weights here. Now I want to see what does the student see. So again, I'm going to come up here to my navigational drop down menu. And I want to go this time, I want to go from the grade book setup. And I want to go to this area here called the user report. OK. So the user report allows me to see the grade book from an individual user's point of view, an individual student's point of view. The first thing I need to do is select a user. I'm going to select a student. I'm just going to click. I'm going to select Annie here, who's the first student in my list. OK, and I want to make sure that I'm viewing the report. I can either view the report as Rob, the teacher, or I can view the report as Annie, the student. <clears throat> so just make sure you're always viewing it as the user. That way, then you can see what they see. So here's what Annie sees when she looks at her gradebook. And then when we come down, 
we can see what's her overall total. Her overall total across everything with all the weightings applied is 54% for the for the whole module. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Like I've gone through, I've looked at my weights, everything looks fine. Uh, that's why the user report is really, really useful for just verifying and, and double checking that everything looks the way it should look for, for your students. Okay, let me jump back to the uh, gradebook setup now. So the next thing I want to tell you about is visibility. So this is something that you should be doing kind of at an, on an ongoing basis, really. You know, let's say a student, uh, you know, let's say you had your students submitting assignments, you know, back, you know, uh, on the 31st of October. Well, you know, before you go and you start grading them, you should come in and you should hide the activity in the grade box. That's really, really important. Before you start grading students on loop, hide the act, hide the item in the grade book, because that is then what controls the, the visibility for the students. So, and let's say students have uh, just submitted assignment B and I'm going to go and I'm going to start grading it now. Uh, well, the, before I start grading, I want to make it invisible. So I find uh, assignment B here. And I just come over to the right hand side to this edit link and I click edit and then I click hide. It's as simple as that. And I've just hidden that one specific um, uh, item. And when I scroll back down, can you see it's, it's a bit faint, but you can just about make out that it's kind of in gray. The link is in gray. So that means it's 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 hidden. But like I always said, every time you make a change to the gradebook, go to the user report and verify things from the student point of view. So by default, the loop gradebook will not show uh, the total to the student if at least one item is hidden in the gradebook. And I'm ready for them all to see the see the grades. Well, then again, obviously, you need to come back into the gradebook. You need to then make assignment B visible again. So click on the edit link, click show. And then again, now that'll all be visible to the students and you can go ahead and you can send out an announcement to them. I'm going to move on to the third thing now, grade categories. OK, and grade categories are just a useful way of organizing your grade book. So again, staying within the gradebook setup, which is where I am, I'm going to go to the top and I'm going to click this button here to add category. OK. And the only thing I really need to do, there's a few options here, but all you really need to do is just give the category a name. So I'm just going to call this topic one coursework and come down and click save. And now I'm going to add another category for topic two and call this topic two coursework and go ahead and save that. Okay, now when I scroll down my grade book, I can see at the bottom here, I've added two new um Gradebook, you can see I have a little folder icon here and uh, a little category called topic one and another little folder icon and a category called topic two. So this idea of categories in your gradebook is kind of like the idea of folders and subfolders on your computer. You've now created some categories in my gradebook. I now have a new column over here on the left that allows me to tick and select a couple of items. There we go. I've selected those and then I come down to the end and I want to go move selected items and I'm going to move them to the topic one category. And there we go. Now I can see in my topic one category, I now have these four items that are kind of indented and they're sitting in here within that topic. Fine. So I got topic one, all my different bits in there, and I have topic two, all my different bits in there. But what I need to do now then is... As I mentioned before, everything in the gradebook needs to add up to 1.0. So if I'm using categories, my categories need to add up to 1.0 because that's the total the gradebook looks for. And then within my categories, the different items need to add up to, to 1.0. So you're kind of just introducing a new hierarchy into the gradebook, if, if that makes sense. So if I look at my topic one category here is set to 0, 0.0, but I now need to set this to 0, 0.5 because topic one is worth half of the module. And then again, topic two is worth half of the module. So that also needs to become 1.5 or 0 0.5. And then of course, within the categories, I now need to change because these um, items in the category are, are only adding up to 0 0.5, but they all need to add up to 0 0.1 because when I add the two categories together, they add up to 0 0.1 to give me my total. So hopefully that makes sense. It's just that, that hierarchy, everything needs to add up to 1.0 along the hierarchies. So essentially all I have to do is I just have to double these, so these now, and then again, come down here and choose save changes to save those changes. And then, like I said before, 
when we make a change, we check the user report. So that's all I really wanted to share with you here um, today. Um, 